tattered but proud people of the Empire State. From the financial and entertainment epicenter of New York City to the sleeping and empty small cities and towns of upstate, which once bustled with manufacturing, mining, and farming. We all know from inspiration, history, and nature, we deserve a return to the success and growth of generations past, a birthright being squandered by corruption in Albany, and the depredations of an insecure, scheming mountebank posing as governor, who loathes both us and himself. As liberty beckoned to enslaved peoples behind the Iron Curtain via American broadcasts after World War II, we now say, believe, rise, and join us. Welcome to Radio Free New York. Hey guys, welcome to Radio Free New York. I'm your host, Andrew Hollister, and today we've got a nice full studio. We've got uh, Bob Savage in here on the left. Please, and Navidad. Yep, yep, and, and Kevin's in the right corner here. And <laughs> um, so welcome to Radio Free New York. It is Friday, and uh, if you've been following the show, that means today is Fake News Friday. And uh, so that means at some point during the show, probably towards the end, um, Kevin will bring up some nice headlines for us, and Bob and I and you listening to the show uh, get to decide whether, well, not decide, you get to try a guess and figure out yeah. if it's fake news or not. See if we can stump each other, see if see if I can give you a headline, and it, it gets hard to tell what's real and what's not nowadays. It, it does, it does, and uh, I, I've, I think I've got a good one as well so we'll oh, we'll see yeah, I, I found one that that i didn't know <laughs> so so if right. i didn't know um hopefully hopefully it's a good one for everybody um this week's been pretty crazy for me i don't know about the rest of you um i don't know if it's just like last minute stuff before the holidays or what but i've been feeling pretty swamped this week and how it goes yeah and my have to go christmas shopping too That's, yeah, yeah. See, see, i did i did that yesterday i, I got recruited Okay. Out to Eastview Mall, which surprisingly was not that busy. I, I mean, we went to Best Buy and then went to the mall, and, you know, it was fairly easy to park close to the door. And, hmm, wow. but maybe because of the Amazon packages that are being shipped all over I'm the place. I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Porch Pirates are having a heyday. Yeah. Yeah, no, I got all my shopping done, but I tell you what, so every year we go and uh, we cut down a Christmas tree. And, you know, a nice fresh live one. We don't have the the plastic trees. Y Yolanda, she's just not about the plastic trees. And this one must have been dead before we cut it down. <laughs> like, it looked green. It looked healthy. But if you sneeze next to the thing, a, like, hurricane of needles <laughs> just goes flying across the room. So, I always vote for one of those aluminum trees. You know, the, the, the 1950s yeah. aluminum trees with the color wheel? Yeah. I always get voted down. <laughs> no, no, I, I'm a real tree guy. We, we've gotten a real tree the last, like, five years. And I think this is the first year where I didn't leave a path of needles through my house. I must have picked a good one yeah. and <laughs> alive enough <laughs> coming into the house where I didn't make a mess. I, I, Andrew, did I hear you say you cut yours down and it still did the, oh, is shedding... Yeah. Yeah, no, we, like, we every year we go out and, you know, cut the tree down. And for whatever reason, I mean, the bottom, like, probably six inches of the tree are bare now. I mean, it's it's literally just, like, piles and piles of needles. And, uh, you know, I've got a little Roomba that goes around and tries to vacuum it up, and it's, like, can't even. Maybe if you get rid of that, it might be like a bubonic plague tree. Or yeah, something. something. I I don't know. So could be full of spiders could yeah. be worse. So our our Christmas miracle at the Hollister house will be if the tree still has needles on it by Christmas Day because it's uh it's not looking so good. So all right, so that's that's a little bit of. Uh, you know, the beginning of the show, but Kevin brought in a great topic. We've been talking about talking about this for, I think, at least a week now, yeah. right? And um, so the topic of today's show is going to be the Afghanistan papers. Um, Kevin's got some information on that. I've been reading through it, trying to educate myself on it. If you haven't heard of this, this, I think, is really important. And I think this is one of those things um, that impeachment is dominating the media right now, and people should absolutely be talking about that. Um, but before we move on to that, we've got maybe, I don't know, about five or so minutes before the break. I know Kevin had a few people reach out saying they felt like he didn't finish out talking about impeachment, so I wanted yeah. to give him a chance well, to wrap up that discussion if so, possible. So I, I don't feel like I need to wrap up. I, I think we need to have, like, a, once the Senate trial starts, maybe, 
maybe one day do eventually a whole other episode we'll just do a whole other episode okay. on it All but right. you know they, but people did say like oh you know you didn't really finish your argument i want to see what you had to say about this and and you know how you would evaluate andrew and what what bob would have to say about it uh, and we mostly ended up talking about the process itself yeah and yeah, like absolutely. the articles itself rather than like the merits of whether or not it's mm -hmm. worthwhile the, these specific articles are worth impeaching the president over and you know, I, I just I wanted to, to address it quickly just because, like, a lot of people, at least in the libertarian movement, are like, why aren't people talking about the Afghanistan papers? Why aren't people talking more about the NDAA? Why aren't people talking about the omnibus bill? It's Everything has been so consumed by impeachment that, you know, we, we're now spending another $1.6 trillion in this omnibus bill. And we have radio silence on it. There's all sorts of stuff in there from making it illegal uh, now to, to purchase cigarettes if you're under 21. I know. Why is that uh, a federal issue? Yeah, right. It's strange federal yeah. law. Uh, you know, to, again, funding these overseas wars in the midst of the Afghanistan papers coming out. But, but it's gotten so little coverage that people probably don't even know and I, I didn't want to be part of that i didn't want to be part of not covering this yeah. vitally important issue it is vitally important too there's a lot of one worlder stuff in there that's really that's very authoritarian and big government it's all just hung on this well like a christmas tree yeah. like we were talking about earlier yeah. Wait, which which thing <laughs> the, the, the omnibus bill the omnibus bus, the bill yeah. Yeah. yeah you know what i mean uh, and and like my christmas tree all the needles are they're fall, falling off <laughs> unfortunately these needles are not falling off i wish they would yeah. everything's stuck and, <laughs> and and you know we have Republicans, Democrats, President Trump, everyone supporting this. Pork for everyone. Merry mm. Christmas to anyone who is a rent-seeking government dependent. But just to put this in perspective, too, folks, uh, the spending levels, the federal spending levels, you didn't like the spending that we had in the Obama administration? Mm. This is about twice what the Obama administration was spending. Yeah, yeah, it's... It's an insane yeah. amount of and, money. And they insane. got so they they got this bill too at like six o'clock at night, and then they're asked to vote for it a few hours later. Six thousand pages of stuff, yeah. the omnibus bill, and you know, and again with, with the NDA, and I, I know I'm jumping topics, but with the NDAA too on Friday, like you have all these Republicans who are rightfully criticizing the FISA court for accepting a illegitimate, you know illegitimate evidence to to be able to spy on carter page mm -hmm. but they renewed it <laughs> they've yeah. all voted yeah. for it all of them except for like eight, eight senators that i think were the only ones who didn't vote for it uh you know so you got like your usual types like Rand paul who were criticizing this but it's like all right do you actually care about these issues or are you just doing it for partisan gain i mean at this point yeah <laughs> at, at this point i i hope that Americans are seeing that government does what's good for government, not for what's good for the people. And it doesn't matter what party you sit at, it doesn't matter who you are, you know, that is what's happening because government has gotten so big and so out of control that that's, it's like, it's all they know at this point. Yeah. So with the Afghanistan papers, I know we only got probably a couple minutes left before the break, but with the Afghanistan papers, what that is, is that there, there was this agency created called the Office of the Special Inspector General for Afghanistan Reconstructions called SIGAR. It, every, everything has to have a, a clever acronym. An acronym, yeah. Right. And, and is so it, they... Is it cigar or cigar? Cigar. <laughs> cigar. Yeah. cigar. Yeah. Uh, so it was created back in 2008 to investigate waste and fraud in war zones. Uh, and then at 2014, they wanted to perform audits, and uh, they they wanted to do this thing called Lessons Learned, where they're mm -hmm. supposed to figure out what happened in Afghanistan, because in 2014, they thought the war was winding down. Uh, they they were not correct. No. Um, we have been at war since uh, September, well, uh, October of 2001, mm -hmm. after the authorization of uh, use of military force in September of 2001 that was passed in, in the immediate aftermath of 9-11. Uh, we went to Afghanistan. Uh, the idea was to clear out al-Qaeda, uh, and that quickly got out of hand. So the Afghanistan Papers interviews people, uh, contractors, generals, State Department officials, Afghanistan officials, uh, UK, uh, NATO allies, all these people about what they thought about the war. And, and most of these people thought that their testimony was never going to become public. Yeah, so, so they, they were, were honest. very honest. Yeah. They, they were yeah. very honest. And there, there's some big names in there 
people he'd recognize in politics, uh, from Hillary Clinton talking about some stuff and people talking about Hillary Clinton, Donald Rumsfeld, they had notes of his, uh, and then, um, oh, who's, I just forgot the, the name of the general, uh, Michael Flynn, mm -hmm. Michael Flynn, who was, uh, <clears throat> One of the one of the commanders in, in Afghanistan for a little while, he, he gave some very honest feedback about what was going on. And the the big overarching conclusion of the Afghanistan papers is that uh, the military, the State Department, presidential administrations from Bush, Obama, and Trump have all misled the American public about what's actually happening in the war in Afghanistan. And I, I guess we'll dive into that more after the break. Yeah, no, absolutely. So especially uh, our veterans out there, if you guys are listening to the show, we'd love to hear from you, be a part of the conversation. Uh, we're going to go to break, but we'll be back in a moment on Radio Free New York. Your business relies on computers and technology to operate. Slow, unreliable networks and servers can cause unplanned downtime and affect your bottom line. The experts at Simple Tech Innovations are here to help. Their preventative maintenance program ensures that your computers and network are kept up to date and monitored for any issues, keeping your business running smoothly. They also help clients achieve HIPAA, PCI, and New York State cybersecurity compliance to keep your network safe safe and secure. Whatever your business IT needs are, Simple Tech Innovations should be your first call. They've won the best in Rochester eight years in a row and have an A-plus Better Business Bureau rating. Call them today for a free consultation at 585-200-3182. That's 585-200-3182. Simple Tech Innovations. Hi, Bob Savage here for the WYSL station. So times are tight, and you've got to watch every penny. How to get maximum advertising impact without shelling out maximum bucks? Well, there's print media, of course. There's a reason why it's called the incredible shrinking daily paper. Then there are those penny savers and shoppers, 98% of which hit the recycling bin without ever being opened. And are you really looking for customers who are shopping for used tires and play pens? You could try cable TV, 500 channels, 12 viewers per channel. Or how about hiring? some guy in a day glow orange wig to dance holding up your sign down at the corner. If you want real advertising impact with a quality message for savvy consumers who actually have money to spend, WYSL has a giant 20,000 watt signal and two FM channels at 92.1 and 95.5 covering 1.4 million people all over Rochester in the region, literally all the way to Pennsylvania. Get results, save time and money. Call us, get on board and start growing for 2020. 346 or WYSL1040.com. Why do businesses choose to move their website from Wix and Squarespace to Simple Tech Innovations? Maybe it's their excellent customer service or attention to detail. Maybe it's their ability to give a truly customized solution. Or perhaps they just like the fact that Simple Tech is a local small business that builds great relationships with its clients. Whatever the reason may be, you can rest assured knowing that the local team at Simple Tech has your best interest in mind when building or updating your website there hands-on and love helping customers achieve their goals but don't take my word for it they've won the best in rochester eight years in a row and have an a-plus better business bureau rating if your website doesn't match your dreams or isn't achieving your goal come on back professionals at simple tech innovations a call today for a consultation at 585-200-3182 that's 585-200-3182 Simple Tech Innovations. You're listening to Radio Free New York. All right. Welcome back to Radio Free New York. I'm your host, Andrew Hollister. We are uh, we're talking about the Afghanistan papers. We, we kind of wrapped up talking about how impeachment has been dominating the media. And because of that, a lot of important stuff is getting... Maybe not overlooked, but not covered, you know, or or even if it is being covered, it's pushed below the fold. You can't find it. It's not hitting the right headlines, the right places. Um, and Nate on Facebook sent in a comment and he says, uh, do you wonder if the lack of coverage is by design? Um, they are pushing the impeachment in order to slip through a lot of other stuff unnoticed. And, you know, I got to say that I often see a pattern of 
I don't want to say unimportant news or unimportant coverage, but things that don't impact our lives as much or as significantly being covered in excess when something big is getting passed in Congress or through the legislature. And I don't know that it's coordination, but it seems to be really convenient. Yeah, no, it does seem to happen that way a lot. I, I don't know that that's like a purposeful, nefarious thing. I, you know, I'm not sure. But I, but what I do think is like the impeachment thing is a heck of a lot more entertaining mm-hmm. than reading the Afghanistan papers. And we're going to post a link to that. And it's it's a beefy article. Like there's, it's actually a series. There's a lot of stuff to go through. And I think it's just not as salacious as entertaining as the impeachment inquiries, neither yeah. is the omnibus bill. No one wants to think about budgets. Yeah, yeah. Well, even think people are frustrated because they, you know, they they know that the government is spending themselves into perdition, mm. and they're mortgaging our future and all that. But they, they they throw up their hands. What can they do about it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So well, no, hopefully absolutely. we can distill this in a entertaining or informative enough hour for you, where you can get started and learn more about it. Uh, so you, you can pay attention to some of these other issues. Maybe we'll have to do an omnibus one too. Yeah. 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 And I did, uh, I did throw part one in the title of this because I can't fathom us getting through even a small percentage of, of, of what's in so here. I mean, we're, here. we're going to have to over weeks, um, bring it up, you know, over time and and maybe we can get a couple veterans in here to who have been to Afghanistan who went through this and and maybe they can talk about things from their side and and how they feel about you know the the fact that perhaps they enlisted during the time when government was putting out false pretexts and and yeah. essentially lying to the American people about what's going on um, and how it was going and the success that we were having and 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 our mission you know i mean a, a lot of people in here said yeah you know um the goalposts kept moving you know things kept changing um and as i watched interviews about this they'd always bring in somebody from afghanistan and every single person i watched i think four separate interviews with four different people and each time they asked the same question they said are the people in afghanistan like is this a surprise to you and every single one of them said no like we, we saw all this happening. We've been saying it's happening. Like, no, it's not a surprise to us, but it seems to be a big surprise to the American people, and, and I think they're right. Yeah. You know, a lot of Americans are surprised. Most people aren't paying attention. And if you are a veteran, we're, we're live noon to one here uh, at WYSL, and you could always call us at 585-346-3000. Uh, but if you're catching a show later on a podcast, you can always contact us at contact at Radio Free New York, all spelled out, dot com. It's contact at Radio Free New York, all spelled out, dot com. Uh, or comment on our Facebook page, comment on the YouTube channel. We'd love to hear hear from you and, and get your feedback, especially if you're a veteran of uh, the war in Afghanistan. Yeah, so so I'm, I'm going to just kick off the discussion here with a quote from Douglas Lute, who is a three-star Army general. He served as the White House Afghan war czar during the Bush and Obama administrations. Um, and in 2015, this is what he said. We were devoid of a fundamental understanding of Afghanistan. We did not know what we were doing. And then he added, what were we trying to do there? We didn't have the foggiest notion of what we were undertaking. And that's 14 years in. Yeah. Without putting words in his mouth, I believe uh, that Colonel Paul Simonelli, who served in Afghanistan, who hosts a show on this station, uh, would have a similar sentiment. I mean, he spent a lot of time over there. There was a lot of construction, a lot of building of stuff, Mm -hmm. you know, buildings and uh, roads and schools and and what have you. And Uh, and there's a whole section on on waste for that, too. Oh, yeah. What 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 he's trying to accomplish and bad incentives, too, to to, to get money into regions. Like, oh, there's more bombings going on here. We'll send more money. And then the money ended up going to corrupt government officials 90% of the time. And you'd send millions of dollars every day. Something yeah. like you couldn't even fathom in the U.S. Mm-hmm. to to a country that is nowhere near as developed as as here. Well, and and also, I mean, in, in terms of their history, in terms of their culture, and everything else, really 
any objective American would look at it and say, what, what are we doing? This is an ungovernable mess. It's mm. just a, a base, basically yeah. a bunch of warring tribes yeah. stuck in 13th century life. Yeah. Now, in, in the Afghanistan papers, they say that within six months, the United States had accomplished what it originally set out to do. That is, like, take out the leaders of al-Qaeda, uh, take out the leaders of the Taliban who are sheltering the al-Qaeda. They Most of them were either captured or in hiding. The Taliban was ready to come to a table and negotiate a peace of some sort, and the U.S. government didn't do that. Yeah. Uh, they, they were kind of already looking ahead to the next war. They are looking at Iraq already. So they were starting to ignore Afghanistan only a few months in. After that initial six months, it, it was kind of unclear, like, what, what they were still doing. They had, they had accomplished their main mission. So now are you trying to enhance human rights? Are you trying to build a new government? Are you trying to nation build? They weren't sure. And even as early as 2003, Donald Rumsfeld, who was the Secretary of Defense, said, I have no visibility into who the bad guys are. They'd already lost track of, like, who the heck are we fighting that early on, this wasn't a thing that uh, only 10 years later, in retrospect, people are seeing. It's early on, they weren't sure what the end game was. Yeah. What's the goal? Yeah. And they said they moved the, the goalpost a lot in, in the Afghanistan papers, but a lot of times, like, the people on the ground weren't even sure what they ever were. There yeah. were things no, like, uh, keep the region safe. Well, okay, from what? From who? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. No, I agree, and that's that's why I think it's important. It, that's that's where they were in 2003 and they fast forward to 2015 and nothing changed <laughs> you know 11 years later they still were asking what what is it that we're doing here you know it so in over 10 years over a decade there's still no clarity there's still no direction there's still no understanding um that that's a yeah. huge issue well, one clue might be that uh, there's an awful lot of defense contractors making a lot of money over there. Mm -hmm. Like one one of the uh, projects that is you know just has most military leaders wagging their heads is the perimeter road. You know about the the perimeter road? They got, oh, yeah, yeah. And they, basically, it's it's like a super highway. They got built in a great big circle all around the country. Well, that's. I, I guess you can say, well, okay, so you have infrastructure there and it helps the citizens, you know, communicate and uh, uh, development and so on and so forth, except there's no mechanism by which they can maintain it. So now this road is already falling apart. They have right. Yeah. It, both from for security reasons, because sometimes the road gets attacked just to disrupt U.S. troop movements and Afghanistan security forces movement, and also because of what you said, because it's there's no other supporting infrastructure in place to maintain a road there. It's just not – or a road of that caliber that they've tried to build. It's like trying to build an interstate and, and not being able to, to repave it. Which that's is just, emblematic of a lot of the projects that are going on in, in Afghanistan, yeah. stuff that's just, you know, built for a society that doesn't exist there. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's uh, – there. there is a question to be asked there too, which is – should American taxpayers be building somebody else's country? Like, is is that an appropriate use of American tax dollars? Should we be taking money that comes out of your paycheck and Kevin's paycheck and all of our listeners' paycheck and going over and building infrastructure for another country, infrastructure that they don't have the technology or ability to ever maintain, repair, take care of, you know, what... What is there to gain there, and is is that like, you know, should government be doing that at all? That that seems wildly outside of the scope of what government is supposed to be doing. And by the way, there is uh, there is a lesson to learn here, other than the fact that, as we all know and suspect, that uh, government wastes a lot of money. Uh, this serves as kind of the model for the role of government. Uh, let's say that in a major a major northeast state that many of us may know mm -hmm. uh what would be the role of government building uh, uh subsidizing a bunch of gaming facilities you know like casinos for which there is no market and which are just uh, turning in you know year after year after of staggering losses but they uh this certain state that uh, it's a state that has 
like two words in the name, <laughs> is spending all of this money on these dopey facilities that nobody wants to go to. You're being so and big, Bob. Yeah, I don't know where yeah, you're yeah. going. I don't think anybody, we're, we're going to play a game of hangman, I think. Yeah. Uh, can I yeah. get a Just let your imagination run wild. Yeah. Well, and I, I would even liken it to, um, you know, I, I went to Colorado and Utah last year. And that would be like New York State saying, you know what we're going to do? Let's go to the 2.4 million acres of raw land in, like, Utah and Colorado. Let's just build a road there where nobody lives. Let's just put it there, you know, and we're going to send our buddies, and we're going to pay our buddies, and, and that. And the people of New York would be like, why are we spending New York tax dollars to build something in another state? To create jobs. It's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, to create jobs somewhere else, yeah. So that, that's what's happening here. I mean, we're paying people to build stuff in another country with our federal tax dollars. Could be a casino. That could be a casino. You know, maybe. Could be New York State. I don't know. Um, all right, guys. We're going to take a break here on Radio Free New York. We'll be back in a moment. Now, more than twice the power. More powerful FM 92.1, FM 95.5, last than 1040 AM, WYSL, Avon, Rochester. Here's the latest forecast from the News 10 NBC Weather Center for tonight. Partly cloudy skies, still a chill in the air. We'll drop back into the teens. On your Saturday, we're looking at some nice weather. A little bit of sun, some clouds. Temperatures will be into the mid-30s. So a bit of a warm-up on Saturday for Sunday. Looking at partly to mostly sunny skies. Uh, we'll get up into the lower 40s. I'm Rich Canelia on WYSL. Because your future is worth it. MGM Associates Insurance. Proudly serving the region since 1984, MGM can meet your coverage needs, ranging from home, condo, and auto, all the way to specialized policies for business, workers' comp, to limo and taxi insurance, and coverage for tech professionals like IT specialists. They can also help lead you through the confusing maze in the new world of health insurance coverage and options. MGM Associates is large enough to serve you, but small enough to care, so you don't have to wait in line on some 800 number to get prompt personal attention. MGM Associates is the only winner of the National Best Practices Award six times in a row. MGM is proud to support veterans groups, including Heroes Home Advantage. For your personal business, home, or professional insurance needs, meet the professionals at MGM Associates Insurance, locally and proudly owned at 1745 Penfield Road in Penfield, 381-7008, or mgminsurance.com. An associate of Preferred Mutual Insurance, one preferred way, New Berlin, New York. Why do businesses choose to move their website from Wix and Squarespace to Simple Tech Innovations? Maybe it's their excellent customer service or attention to detail. Maybe it's their ability to give a truly customized solution. Or perhaps they just like the fact that Simple Tech is a local small business that builds great relationships with its clients. Whatever the reason may be, you can rest assured knowing that the local team at Simple Tech has your best interest in mind when building or updating your website. Their hands on and love helping customers achieve their goals. But don't take my word for it. They've won the best in Rochester eight years in a row and have an A-plus Better Business Bureau rating. If your website doesn't match your dreams or isn't achieving your goals, give the professionals at Simple Tech Innovations a call today for a consultation at 585-200-3182. That's 585-200-3182. Simple Tech Innovations. Tour the days before Christmas. You can tell by the sound. The face is so nuts, just fast food can be found. Shopping, the school play, decorations, and snow. For quality family food, where can you go? When what to your wondering eyes should appear but a juicy wall burger, a frosty root beer, handmade ice cream, crispy fries, even wall dough. Too busy to sit there? Then get it to go. And since Tom Wall's quality and value are things you can see, now you can get home to put up that tree. Tom Wall's wishes your family a season of cheer, a wonderful holiday and a tasty new year but just as you're settling tonight in your bed hark what's that sound that you hear overhead ho, ho, ho. merry christmas to all and make no mistake it's not a hamburger it's tom wall's ground steak ho, 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 ho. a holiday greeting from
from Tom Wall's family to yours. Nine locations in the metro. WYSL. Do you know the difference between an old-style dealership and Moyer Chevrolet? One, we have a non-commissioned sales team. Our sales professionals will help you find the right vehicle to meet your needs and budget, not ours. Two, add our no-hassle experience, and you will not want to go anywhere else. Take a short drive to Moyer Chevrolet in Honeyoy Falls. You'll save time and money. Moyer Chevrolet. I need an open mind, a strong cup of joe, to pay my bills, a sweet new... Last spot. Good advice. A loan that's fast. A bank I can trust. Whether you need to buy a coffee, pay a bill, or expand your business, Tompkins Bank of Castile has the mobile tools you need to make it easy. And since we're local, you can depend on us to treat you like friends and to support the community where you live. Tompkins Bank of Castile, your local, mobile, remarkable community bank. Member FDIC, equal housing lender, loan subject to credit approval. Radio Free New York. All right, we are back here on Radio Free New York. I'm your host, Andrew Hollister. We're talking about the Afghanistan papers. Um, and, and I want to just kind of lead off with some numbers for you guys. Um, we've lost in this war uh, 2,400 American lives and 2,300 of them were soldiers deployed with another 20,589 who were wounded in action, which is a it just a huge number. Um, and the, the sticking point here is nobody knows how much we've actually spent. They've only been able to estimate. So they've estimated somewhere between 934 billion and 978 billion. So there's like a 44 billion dollar swing here that uh, uh, we're not really who's sure. At that point, <laughs> yeah, you uh, know, because um, I've heard over a trillion dollars, like easily over a trillion, yeah. when we're including you know other things too. Yeah, and and that could depend. Like I don't know that this number includes things like building the roads and infrastructure over there. You know, yeah. so that it could be way more than that. But even at those numbers, we're talking about six to seven thousand dollars per taxpayer is your contribution to this out of your paycheck. I mean, that's that's a yeah. lot. And where are we? That, that's the other thing that we never hear about. What is the status of of whatever the mission is? What's the mission and what's the status of that mission? And honestly, from what I've heard, I don't think the the command over there understands. They, I don't think so. What the mission is right as of right now, there's supposed to be negotiations going on with the Taliban to have the U.S. leave. So yeah. that's. Which the current is, status. Well, we did, which, uh, uh, which happened and then got shut down once already this year. Yeah, so, so. It, it could stop. <laughs> well, Trump knows? has announced a true production of about 4,000, and I think we're leaving about 9,000 there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you know, I, I've got this quote here from a retired Navy SEAL, Jeffrey Eggers, wh whose, you know, information was also in these papers. And he, he states from his perspective, he says, After the killing of Osama bin Laden, I said Osama was probably laughing in his watery grave considering how much we have spent on Afghanistan. He's probably right. Yeah. A ridiculous amount of money. Um, and I, had, I had quoted something about how much money was spent in a day. Uh, there's there's a part in here that says, one unidentified contractor told government interviewers he was expected to dole out $3 million on daily, daily for projects in a single Afghan district roughly the size of a U.S. county. Mm. And it goes on to say, he once asked a visiting congressman whether the lawmaker could responsibly spend that kind of money back home. He said, hell no. Well, sir, that's what you've just obligated us to spend, and I'm doing it for communities that live in mud huts with no windows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you're if if you're sitting there and you guys all know that I am a small government guy, right? <laughs> I, I like my government as small and uh, as it can possibly be, and spending as little money as possible. Um, but if you're not that person, say you're somebody who thinks that your government program of your choice, whatever it is, uh, should get more funding, you should be looking at this and being really upset. You should be really upset that we're spending three plus million dollars a day on somebody else's community instead of your own. If 
if you feel the way I do that government shouldn't be spending $3 million a day probably anywhere, then you should be upset too. So this shouldn't be a right issue, a left issue, a centrist issue. This is an issue for all of us as Americans. This is yeah. a problem. And, and not just Afghanistan. Yeah. yeah. And, and in, Afghanistan, in Afghanistan in particular, uh, the U.S. Agency for International Development, USAID, uh, guessed that 90% of what they spent was overkill. He says, we lost objectivity, we were given money, told to spend it, and we did it without reason. Yeah. They, well, they, bear in mind that there's... Just throwing it out. Yeah, the metric with government for success is how much money you spend. That, that's we, we that's kind of a cultural thing. $100 million in aid. Yay. Right. Celebrate. Uh, uh, from $90 million last year. Yay! No, that's, that's not a metric. That's irresponsible. And... and Part of me thinks, or part of me knows, that members of Congress don't even know what they're spending. They don't know what they're yeah. doing. Then there's, again, I, I I know that with the latest omnibus bill and the latest National Defense Appropriation Act, do they even know what they put this money towards? They've agreed to keep funding this war after these papers came out. Yeah. Well, they don't read it. I yeah. mean, come on, they they do not read it, and it's not their money, so they don't care. Yeah. It's not their money. They don't care. That's the problem. No, they don't. And and there's other parts in here that are fascinating about, like, Pakistan, too, and how we kept giving money to Pakistan, and then Pakistan kept kind of passing that off to the Taliban mm -hmm. and, yeah. and, and supporting the people that we thought were our enemy in this region or, or were our enemy. It, it becomes a little fuzzy. Yeah. And, well, there was – and you bring up that point. I mean, I was reading through, and it was a little unclear to me. I need to read it, like, a few more times to, to understand. But there was, like, us giving money to, like, the government, to contractors, um, to, like, these – tribes and, and other groups and what it seemed to be saying, and I have to read this to confirm, that like the government would use the money to repair things yet we were funding these tribes who were just breaking things. And so it was this perpetual cycle of us giving both sides money to just keep doing the same thing with no result. Well, it, there's, there's one part of the papers that talks about, like, uh, kind of the bad incentives of giving money too, right? So mm -hmm. especially after a troop surge during the Obama administration, they said, okay, the, the regions that need the most money and troop support are the ones who are facing the most violence, right? Yeah. So that's where all the money and stuff would go. And then... There's all this incentive because you have corrupt officials in the area. They're like, well, we oh, can just take a little bit of this money, take actually money. fund some of the violence ourselves, and then we get mm -hmm. more. Yep. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, you've created this really bad incentive to cause more violence in your region because that means that the, the people in power that we've put in power in this region get paid. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So – so the the war on terror, right? That's that's what they, they call this. Yeah. Um, was us funding terrorism in somebody else's country and some of the relief from that terrorism that we're funding. You know, if, if we wanted to summarize that, while losing American lives, while our government knew this sort of stuff was happening and lied about it yeah. to the American people. And, and, and uh, ending Afghani lives, too. 150,000 mm -hmm. people in Afghanistan died. You know, yeah. That's yeah, and that's, that's, that's something that gets brought up a lot less. You know, we talk about American lives and American troops wounded. Um, but, yeah, what about the indigenous people there whose country we invaded and they died as a result as well? Yeah, most of them just trying to live their lives, do what they can, mm -hmm. survive. Well, I think you can also make the argument that the Taliban would have killed at least as many as our warfare, our sponsor warfare did because they were absolutely brutal and relentless in trying to repress people there. But uh, okay. that's an unknowable thing, but it's also not beyond the realm of reasonableness. But the real, the, the real critical thing here is for everybody to assess basically the role of government in anything that you want to point to, and this is emblematic of it, the waste, the dishonesty, uh, the unaccountability, and of course the it's just an economy of scale. The bigger government gets, the worse everything gets. The worse the politics get, the more the waste there is, the more ingrained it becomes, the more it trammels on your rights. And it's just uh, the only solution, the only solution, and that's the takeaway from this show, in case you haven't picked up on, is to reduce the size of it. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. 
You know, and, you know, and I think it's a fair question to ask about the Taliban thing. It's just that what what is the U.S. willing and able to do about it? You know, do we have a role in fixing this problem in a country on the other side of the world? And and I don't think the answer is yes. And I, and I think I could make an argument that we made things worse, that, that the U.S. government made things worse. I'm not going to lump in we with this. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and again, in every step of the way, too, it's hard to get a good picture of what's going on and whether or not this is a good idea because U.S. government officials lied about it consistently. Mm. No. And, and I think you could probably make the case that a lot of people lied to Congress in testimony about this. Uh, people like General Petraeus got up and said, yeah, the war in Afghanistan is going great. Mm-hmm. How do we – yeah. No, that, 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 was, that was not true. Several U.S. officials got up and said, everything's fine. We're doing well. Mm-hmm. Even though what what they said is uh, there's there's one quote in here it says uh, every data point was altered to present the best picture possible. Bob Crowley, an Army colonel who served as senior count- counterinsurgency advisor to the U.S. military commanders in 2013 and 2014, surveys, for instance, were totally unreliable, but reinforced that everything we're doing was right. They would just keep using different metrics. A lot of times they would use like the, the the aid metrics. Again, we spent this money in this region, therefore we're successful. They didn't do things like body counts because that didn't go over well in Vietnam. Uh, there's a lot of correct criticism about that. But they would they would do other things like troop numbers trained, violent, violence levels, uh, control of territory. They, they, they even used the number of suicide attacks increasing as a positive metric for the region, which is... Mm. Insane. Yeah, no, that's that's no good. All right, guys, you're listening to Radio Free New York. We're going to take a brief break, and then we're going to kick off Fake News Friday. We'll be back on Radio Free New York. Why do businesses choose to move their website from Wix and Squarespace to Simple Tech Innovations? Maybe it's their excellent customer service or attention to detail. Maybe it's their ability to give a truly customized solution. Or perhaps they just like the fact that Simple Tech is a local small business that builds great relationships with its clients. Whatever the reason may be, you can rest assured knowing that the local team at Simple Tech has your best interest in mind when building or updating your website there hands-on and love helping customers achieve their goals but don't take my word for it they've won the best in rochester eight years in a row and have an a-plus better business bureau rating if your website doesn't match your dreams or isn't achieving your goals give the professionals at simple tech innovations a call today for a consultation at 585-200-3182 that's 585-200-3182 simple tech innovations Aircraft Environmental Systems proudly supports Radio Free New York. Rochester-based leaders in climate simulation chambers for America's R&D laboratories. We're experts in troubleshooting, calibrations, custom designs, and consulting for more than 40 years. Industry pioneers, we created the first ever fleet of temperature, humidity, and altitude test chambers available to rent coast to coast. Trained and trusted by environmental chamber manufacturers, we are ACES. Find us at acesinc.com. Human trafficking is when someone is being forced, tricked, or coerced to engage in a sex trade or forced labor. If you're a kid and forced to sell sex, drugs, or work against your will, that's trafficking. You're not a criminal, and there is help available. Call the National Human Trafficking Hotline at 888-373-7888 or text Be Free. Sponsored by the Livingston County Safe Harbors Human Trafficking Task Force. Your business relies on computers and technology to operate. Slow, unreliable networks and servers can cause time and affect your bottom line. The experts at Simple Tech Innovations are here to help. Their preventative maintenance program ensures that your computers and network are kept up to date and monitored for any issues, keeping your business running smoothly. They also help clients achieve HIPAA, PCI, and New York State cybersecurity compliance to keep your network safe and secure. Whatever your business IT needs are, Simple Tech Innovations should be your first call. They won the best in Rochester eight years in a row and have an A-plus Better Business Bureau rating. Call them today for a free consultation at 585-200-3182. That's 585-200-3182. Simple Tech Innovations. Radio Free New York. 
right, welcome back to Radio Free New York. I'm your host, Andrew Hollister. We were talking about the Afghanistan papers, and there is just so much to talk about. There is so much to talk about, so much to read, so much to digest. Um, so we're we're going to carry it on in other episodes. We're not sure when we're going to carry it on yet, but no. we're going to uh, keep so it we're, going. We're still digesting everything in here. And again, we, we'd love to hear your feedback on this too. So send us an email, contact at RadioFreeNewYork.com uh, or comment on our posts. You know, we, we want to carry on this discussion. We think it's important. Um, and it is, of course, Fake News Friday. And, you know, this is the biggest fake news of the last 18 years. But we do have some more fun stuff to uh, close out the week. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I see uh, Tony on Facebook. He wants to know if we're in a new studio. Nope, we're in the same studio, Tony. Uh, you know... Maybe uh, maybe the camera angle is... Yeah, just, is I just don't have just, my face hidden. I know, we, we could have kept going with it on purpose. I could have been yeah. like Wilson from Home Improvement, just like yeah. never see my face. In right, <laughs> just see his eyes above yeah. the fence. <laughs> <laughs> she just kept with that theme. Yeah, you don't yeah. need to see my face anyway. All right, Kevin. So so for those of you who this might be your Fake News Friday, what, what happens is uh, we... we find some articles that are hard to tell essentially is it fake news or is it real news uh, we kind of read off the headlines here and then we all get to try to guess is it fake news or not so uh kevin you what do you got for us well I'll, I'll let you go first because i'm curious if you have one to say oh, i want to okay. take yeah, your yeah, one yeah, yeah. I, so I so it's, right it's been a crazy week for me and i only have one uh, fake news headline for you guys. Um, so this is Epstein's uh, suicide attempt video footage is missing. Is that fake news or is that real news? Missing or non-existent? Uh, it could be one or the same, I guess. You could you could go either way, but um, but the 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 title is that his his. Uh, security footage is missing from his suicide. No. It's, there's so many like conspiracies running around the Epstein stuff, and in so much like nonsense I see in memes on Facebook. Mm -hmm. I this is this is a tough one. I'm like, did I see that in I, a, a in a meme or is that a real news article? So that's that's why I chose this one because I didn't know the answer. So I figured it would be a hard one. So uh, I I'm gonna say it's real. What do you think, Bob? I'm gonna say it's real too. So. They said it was missing. Turns out it was not missing. It was not so missing. So they, they did okay. announce... Well, what does that mean? Does that mean it's not existent or is it no, just uh, not missing? Apparently the, the footage or the video has been preserved by the Metropolitan Correctional Center staff. Oh, wait a minute. And they uh, you're telling it. me that there is actual video of Epstein committing suicide? I, as I'm reading it, that's... That's my understanding. Well, then um, why is this still an issue? If there's video of it happening, we know that he committed suicide. Hasn't been made public yet. I don't know. I I don't know. I, it may never be. Yeah, yeah, it, it may never be. So that's, uh, that, that's a problem with lack of transparency with government. I mean, and to Kevin's point, yeah, like the memes going all around the Internet, like, you know, have, have been just like crazy. There were days that I saw nothing else but like Epstein memes in my newsfeed. I couldn't see anything else. Constantly. And, it, and so. it's from like left and right. Like I see it from... It's from everybody. Yeah, yeah. It's, oh, yeah. it's from people want places. It's not just, just... This is what happens in the absence of proof. In the absence of facts, can't some responsible party come out and say, there is video? Yeah. It, 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 it does exist. Mm -hmm. It conclusively proves that he killed himself with the paper sheets doing mm -hmm. some... Uh, by the way, Louder with Crowder has got a... Uh, there's a YouTube video online you've got to see uh -huh. where he goes through. He actually uh, he actually uh, acts out what would be necessary for Epstein to kill himself, and it's hilarious. Oh, jeez. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I is it one of those one not yet. safe for work videos, or is that well, a... you know, I mean, it's 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 all done in a joking way, sure. but I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's like just it's just such a ludicrous proposal, yeah. a proposition. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it's interesting. They don't specifically say that the footage shows that he committed suicide. They just it's said just that footage. the footage is not missing, so. is all it says. So uh, so we'll keep our eyes on this and see. The footage shows both Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump going in <laughs> to personally <laughs> kill Jeffrey Epstein. It's going to yeah. blow everyone's mind. Yeah, yeah. My, my, I would be surprised if the footage gets shown. I bet you they say, 
oh, footage proves this, you know, and they'll they'll say it. This is one of those articles that has come out during the impeachment that people aren't seeing, yeah. you know. So I wouldn't be surprised, you know, uh, when the Senate takes their vote, they'll slip this into the news cycle. Well, yeah, it could be. All right, so I, I got I got a headline for you. Working Families Party now says taxpayer is a racist term. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go with true. I I think I could see them saying that. Like I I want to say it's fake, but but maybe it's true. I I'm going to go with it's true. It is true. Oh, <laughs> so, I knew it. Oh, so no. that, that, that one is true. And I'll, I'll quote from the, a Politico article. It says, uh, messages that frame taxpayers as an aggrieved or marginalized group promotes an anti-tax, anti-government worldview that is often used to justify disinvestment and austerity policies. And this is from the, uh, the questionnaire that they send out to their candidates. And it says, uh, taxpayer has also become a racially coded term designed to appeal to white individuals and reinforce the misconception that they are paying taxes taxes to support the needs of people, often implied to be non-white, who don't pay taxes. How is that misconception? So, <laughs> How is that inaccurate? So, so yeah. the, way, the way I read this is the people in Working Families Party are racist and believe that only white people pay taxes. Yeah, is someone, that, someone is should that, tell Working Families Party that people of color also pay taxes. Yeah. See? Yeah, that's do. that's absolutely. Now, is this New York State Working Families Party, or is there yeah, a no, national? This is New York State so this Working is all Families local. Party. Wow, so this is this is stuff that's Shame happening around them. here. Uh, so, so even a few Democrats are like, I, taxes are important issues. We talk about yeah. using taxpayer wow. money responsibly all the time. Uh, so even mm. some of the Democrats are like, what? I I. Well. <laughs> That is a, a terrible and very poor statement to make on behalf of any political party. That's no, it's just like I don't know. I, I get frustrated with like the the like the woke competitions sometimes. Like with you need like to get oh, some sleeping pills for those people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like every like everything. Like, and there there is real legitimate racism out there. And then they're they're focusing on taxpayer as a racist term. Yeah. Also, promoting anti-tax, anti-government worldview is kind of my bread and butter. So, like, yeah, I, I'm yeah. fine with so that. They, yeah, uh, but like, pretty yeah, soon, woke's going to be a racist term too. Yeah. Is there a website we can go to oh, where no, we no, can no. find out what terms are okay to use and which ones? Are not? Oh, that's a good question. We should make one and put some ads on it. We fund something like a candidate for Senate or something yeah, with all the money we make. Quick enough yeah. is, is the problem. So, yeah, that's that's the latest uh, thing. Uh, is that now saying taxpayer. It's racist. Racist. Okay. Democrats and Republicans mm. better stop using it yep. so you can... Uh, or you'll be shamed. Yeah, they... You'll have to go yeah. to the penalty box. No, that's right. They, they, they're they going to drag you, and you're going to get canceled. That's what's going to happen. So, look out. You got anything for us, Bob? Uh, I got one. Uh, just a quick one. I, uh, so, uh, there's a uh, former Disney star of the series Boy Meets World who recently came out and said that she makes much more money doing porn. Mm. Um, uh, I'm going to say, so So the article says that she makes more money doing pornography than... Yes, so she, has, she has porn online now. Um, true or, true or, or bogus. It, whether or not she does porn or whether she makes now, more the money. Story, whether the story is true or bogus. I, I would say I, I think there's a ton of money in pornography, so I'm thinking that, yeah, you'd make way more money in porn than a Disney I, show. I don't think more in Disney. I'm going to say it's fake. Uh, it's true. Uh, New York Post. Right. Uh, boy meets world star Maitland Ward. I make more money doing porn. Uh, let's see. She rose to fame on Boy Meets World on ABC Disney. Uh, and not only that, she's even been nominated for awards. She says, take that, Academy. <laughs> well, there you go. Good for her. Kevin sex sells. Uh, yeah, yes. no, apparently. <laughs> more All than right. Disney. You know, that's, uh, this is how it is. We got time for one more. Is it, right. Kevin, you got some more? Just, sure. just, just about here. You got sure. about, uh, I got one. Uh, 30 time seconds. for one more. Uh, did the U.S. Department of Agriculture list Wakanda as a trading partner? Mm, the Wakanda what? being the fictional nation in, in the Black Panther in the movie. Black Panther movie. You know what? Oh man. Hmm. I'm gonna say they did. Yeah, they did. Oh, yeah, I, mean, I was gonna say yeah. they did. It was there for a test <laughs> briefly. Oh, so they had Wakanda up there, and yeah. they, they said that we gave them livestock and corn. I think. There so. you go. 
<laughs> All right, guys. Thank you for joining us on Radio Free New York. We'll be back same time, same place on Monday.